His group on to Ottawa informed Global News minutes before the incident that he was protesting a lack of a national wildfire fighting service. If I was just yelling on the sidewalk, you wouldn't care. You wouldn't be filming me. So that's why we do this, and that's why we're going to continue to do this. All right, guys. So for today's video, uh, we're going to be talking about these kooky climate activists. As you can see there, that was a one-man army, and um, I'm not sure that these climate activists seem to understand that whatever tactics they're using aren't working. Now, do I think that climate change is potentially a problem? Of course. In today's news, all you're hearing about is the hurricanes, the flooding, the fires. It, you know, so clearly something is going on. But I don't think they understand that throwing paint or cake or causing road blockages is the correct way to go about doing this. Now, this gentleman claims that standing on the side of a road with a sign or a flag won't get the attention that's needed in regards to the climate change. However, I don't think anybody really is tuning in once they see these people causing all this dumb mischief. Now, we started to see a lot of this in Europe where they were throwing paint on the Van Gogh and cake at the Mona Lisa. That's frosting. A security guard at the Louvre is attempting to wipe off the Mona Lisa display after a cake attack. The same group that this gentleman is a part of ended up a few months ago throwing paint all over, I believe it was Justin Trudeau's chambers or cabinet. And now we're starting to see a lot more blockages on the roads, especially in DC, uh, some major ones, and now Nevada. And that's what I wanted to talk about today was this article that was written saying, climate change activists who blockade burning men accuse police of excessive force. I'm gonna be playing a few clips of this incident in, in particular, and I'd have to agree and disagree in terms of the force used. Now, I do agree with what the, the police or these rangers, whatever they're called, did in terms of the blockade, but how they handled the people afterwards, I'm not sure I would agree fully, but um, I'd love to get your guys' reaction. So here we go. Man, get off the highway. This is a state route. Everybody will be arrested if not. 30 seconds. Send your leader to my vehicle. Let's talk. Get off the fucking road. As you can see, as he rams through the barricade, a lot of these people are actually chained to the item, which I don't think the Rangers knew about that. But um, once he turns around and he starts targeting some of the people that are not attached to something, he pulls out his taser, which is fine. It's a non-lethal weapon, puts him down on the ground right away, uh, starts yelling, stop his resisting arrest, which doesn't fully look like they are. And when he picks up one of the women, you could see that she's all bloodied and covered in, in cuts and stuff from her face. The other women there losing her mind saying, we don't have weapons, we're peaceful protesters. Um, you know, obviously people are scared and, and this and that. But if you take a look at the clip I'm going to be showing now with the amount of chaos in a sense that these protesters created, 
I think you could kind of understand the frustration that the people in the Rangers had. Now that's a clip of miles long of backed up traffic as all of these people are heading to Burning Man, which as you can see here, big festival, I think around 80,000 people typically there, um, creating a small little city, and then they all burn it down at the end. The problem I see with the tactic that these guys keep using, especially blockading, is you have hundreds if not thousands of now campers, RVs, big vehicles, just idling, creating tons and tons and tons of more pollution while they're sitting there waiting for you to move. And on top of that, these guys are in the desert because that's where they go to do this Burning Man thing. And in this place, if you run out of gas, there's not a gas station very readily available. So not only do you run the risk of your vehicle running out of gas just being idled here, you're also creating more pollution, which they're trying to stop pollution. But it's not only here, it's also places like in the UK, where this is, I'd say, more of a recreational thing, a festival, whatever you want to call it. But there's been actual incidences where emergency support can't get through the blockades, um, people can't get to the funerals of their loved ones, People can't get to their kids to pick them up on time. And as much as some people might put value on these recreational things like Burning Man, like sporting events where they paid good money for tickets or they wanted to go just relax and chill, I think blocking major roadways where emergencies and all that stuff can't get through is the bigger problem. Now, I think if you guys were actually standing on the side of the road with your signs, with your message, People might actually take the time to look, to read, to think about what you're doing. When you sit there in the middle of the road, causing all of this chaos and havoc, nobody cares at that point what you're talking about or what you're trying to push. They dismiss you. They want to get through you. They don't care. You're just irritating them and frustrating them even more. But I don't understand how these guys can't seem to think every blockade that they create all of those idling cars, all of the pollution that they're creating just from these stupid movements that they're trying to do. Throwing the paint and all that stuff, that to me doesn't make any sense. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, it gets you on the TV, I guess, for a little bit. But the blockades is what the real issue is. I'll leave this video linked uh, of the whole Ranger incident so you guys can check it out yourself. But as always, love to hear what you guys think about this situation. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.